Hey everyone, Brennan Loveless here. I'm the campus pastor at our Chantilly campus at New Life Christian Church. And today I want to share a tool with you called the prayer wheel. So let's jump into this tool. Um, whenever we're fasting, we want to focus on the sacrifice we're making of not eating a meal and instead turn that attention towards God and seeking after Him and His will for each and every one of us. And so if you have a lunch break that's an hour at work or even on the weekends, you might, if you're anything like me, say, I don't know if I can pray for 60 minutes. And so there's this tool called the prayer wheel that I want to talk to you about today. And there's going to be an image that comes up right now. And there will be a link for you to be able to actually click on and get kind of a description that'll help guide you, which is really cool. But there's 12 different things in the prayer wheel slices of pie, if you will, but not slices of pie that we're going to eat while we're fasting. And each slice of that pie is a five minute time increment. And there's a different focus for each one of those pieces of the prayer wheel that total up to 60 minutes. So let's jump right in and I'm going to give you um, a, a verse or two and a short description of each thing that'll help you as you try this prayer wheel out for the first time. So the first thing at the beginning and the very end of the prayer wheel, we take five minutes to focus on praising God. So we start that hour by praising God first and foremost, praising Him for things that are on your mind right now. Praise Him for one special thing that He has done in your life this past week. And praise Him for His goodness to your family. David writes in Psalm 63, 3, because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. So praise is focusing on who God is and what he's done for us, but more about his character and his nature. And so focus for the next five minutes on praising him for who he is. Second, we're going to spend some time to wait. And if you're anything like me, I'm not good at waiting. Okay, but this is a really good practice. We are going to spend time, five minutes, just waiting on the Lord. So that's different than like meditating, which we'll get to in a later step, but we're just going to be silent and let him pull together some reflections for you to focus on for the remainder of the time. Isaiah 40, 31 says, Yet those who wait on the Lord, or hope in the Lord, will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. And again, if you're anything like me, there's times that I'm weary and I'm tired. But often, I'm not spending much time in my life intentionally waiting on the Lord and letting Him pull some reflections together for me of things that I need to pray on for the remainder of the time. Three, confess. Maybe as you're waiting, you're asking God to start to reveal things in your heart that are not pure so that He will cleanse us. There's a powerful, there's a powerful action in confessing our sins to God. So we spend five minutes, ask the Holy Spirit to show you anything in your life that might be displeasing to Him. Ask Him to point out attitudes that are wrong, as well as specific acts for which you have not yet made a confession for. And then confess that to the Lord so that you might be cleansed. Psalm 139, 23 and 24 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts and see if there be any hurtful way in me and lead me in the everlasting way. So spend some time confessing your sins to God. Four, read the word. Spend time reading in the Psalms, in the prophets, and passages on prayer that are located in the New Testament. Second Timothy 3.16, all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. So read the word as prayers to God and it'll help guide you. Five, this one most of us are really good at because usually in our prayers, my prayers can be selfish and I'm asking God for things. Uh, this is also, can the, the people use the word petition. 
So number five is ask or petition. Make requests on behalf of yourself. Matthew 7, 7, Jesus says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. I would also encourage you to focus on your needs. Uh, in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus tells us not to worry because our Heavenly Father loves us and will take care of our needs. So this isn't about wants. This is asking God to provide for us when we're asking Him for certain things. Six, we turn our focus to other people and to a lost and dying world, and that's called intercession. Make requests on behalf of others. Our prayer centers on intercession for a lost and dying world, and this is praying for people who have needs, for their needs. Um, It can also be praying for um, our leaders, for our country, for our family, for our friends who are lost. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2 says, First of all, then, I urge that requests, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made on behalf of all people, for kings and all who are in authority, so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. So spend the next five minutes interceding for others. Seven. Pray the word. So we've, we've read the word. We've asked God for things. We've, uh, we've asked for things for other people. And so now we're going to pray the scripture. Pray specific passages. Scriptural prayers, as well as a number of psalms, lend themselves really well to this purpose. 2 Samuel twenty two thirty one 31 says, As for God, his way is blameless. The word of the Lord is refined. He is a shield to all who take refuge in him. The cool thing about the Word of God is that it's living and active. And as 2 Samuel said, God is blameless and He's also given us His Word. So when we read the Word, we are, we are actually inside the will of God. And so that's a really cool thing when we're praying. And it can help us focus on the things of God and let the Word speak to us even as we are praying it. So eight, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving differs from praise in that praise we talked about earlier at the beginning is who God is, and Thanksgiving recognizes God for what He has done, specific things He has done for us, for our family, etc. So give thanks to the Lord for the things in your life, or on behalf of your family, or on behalf of your church as well. Philippians 4, 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer, And pleading with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So take the next five minutes and thank God for all the wonderful things that he's done in your life. Nine, this might make you a little nervous, uh, but I promise it's not as hard as it sounds. Sing. We're going to spend five minutes singing. And that can be out loud. That can be in the car. That can be in your heart. Sing songs of praise or worship or another hymn or spiritual song. Psalms, if you open up your Bible to Psalms, there's a lot of really good Psalms for this time as well. Uh, You can get on YouTube for five minutes and find your favorite worship song and you can read along to those words if the lyrics are on there. But spend time singing to God. Psalm 105, 1 through 3 says, Give thanks to the Lord, call upon His name. Make His deeds known among the peoples. Sing to Him. Sing praises to Him. Tell of all His wonders. Boast in His holy name. May the heart of those who seek the Lord be joyful. And there's something cool when you're singing, whether that's just in your heart or out loud, that causes joy. And so find some worship songs, find some scripture, and try singing that. Ten, meditate. Ask the Lord to speak to you and have a pen and paper. This would be really good uh, if you like to journal. Even if you don't like to journal, it'd be really good to have a pen and paper ready to record whatever impressions that he gives you. And so when we're meditating, we're actually meditating on the Word of God. We're thinking of spiritual reflections, maybe of something that you read earlier in your time. Um, and, and so Joshua 1.8 actually talks He's talking to the people of Israel after they received the law. And it says, This book of law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will achieve success. 
and this isn't a health and wealth thing, but when we're focusing on God and meditating on his word, it has a funny way of kind of like being written on our hearts and us being able to remember those things throughout our day. If you're doing this in the morning or if you're doing it before you go to bed at night or on your lunch break, it can help us kind of refocus when we're thinking of some of these spiritual themes or scriptures that we might have read earlier, or maybe that we haven't read read in a while, but we're we're meditating on God's word and thinking, what does that mean? Who what does that say about who God is? What does that mean for my life? And how do I kind of imprint this on my mind so that I can live the rest of my life always being able to apply whatever verse you're thinking about and meditating on? How, how does that apply to the rest of my life? Eleven. We're almost at the end. Spend five minutes just listening. Just listening. So spend time merging the things that you have read in the last hour, things you have prayed, and things that you might have sang, and see how the Lord brings them all together to speak to you. And a lot of times for me when I'm listening, um, I heard somebody say this, but it, it resonated with me, is... A lot of times when I'm listening and I'm trying to hear God speak, a lot of times uh, it's bringing up verses that I maybe have known for a long time. Maybe they're just kind of somewhere in my subconscious. Um, and as I'm listening, though, God is bringing things to mind. Oh, I need to, I need to apply that to my life. I need to listen to that. So the last five minutes, we're going to spend time actually praising God once again. We started this way and we're going to end this way. So we're going to praise God for the time that we've had with him, the time we've been able to spend doing this, uh, and the impressions that he has kind of put on our heart in the last hour. And again, this is praising God for who he is, his nature. And Psalm 100 verse 4 says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courtyards with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. So do that for the final five minutes. And you just spent an hour praying. And I don't know about you. I've done this a couple times before myself. And it really is a more powerful tool than I thought it was. But as you are working through trying to learn how to pray better and you're fasting right now, and you're trying to find out how am I going to fill that time when I would normally eat and how is God going to work in my life, I really do think God is going to do great things through you. And I'm so glad that I had the opportunity to share this tool with you.